Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1 800 808 5548. And welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show. You know, we always want to hear from you. You can give us a call. We are live in the studio at 800 808 5548. Time flies when you're having fun, so make sure you get those phone calls in, get those questions in. We're talking about the future of real estate. Obviously, we started off right now with Berkshire Hathaway. That's a great future in real estate right there, let me tell you. You know, and now we're going to transition over to Nicole Brandy. Nicole, how are you doing? Good morning. Thanks for waking me up on this beautiful morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, knowing you, you weren't woken up. You were already doing a thousand things, and you happened to stop by the studio, which we really appreciate. Well, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> and Nicole comes from a background that Nicole used to do a, a TV show called Hot on Homes. In yes, your- it was an exciting show. It's still on the air, uh, just featuring master plan communities across the greater Houston area. So I picked Nicole. Nicole up at an event the other night. And her, and her, well, her, I would say you spoke to Nicole <laughs> at an event the other night. <laughs> uh, uh, it's funnier the way I said it. And uh, we started talking. I thought, well, this is a perfect match to have somebody who, who understands media come to the show and maybe even give us some pointers on what we can do and things like that. So, so thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. So talk about the future. You've been in real estate for how long now? For a lovely two and a half years selling real estate, but I've been born and bred in the business. That's right. Your father's a And I will a not developer. tell you how old I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and, <we're, laughs> and, you know, and we're not going to ask. <laughs> so that makes it that makes it easy. So uh, you're with Martha Turner Properties. Correct. And uh, you, you were selling probably higher end homes and things like that. I think Correct. you said you did like $6 million your first year. I so, did. Yes. So it that, was a lot of blood, sweat. <laughs> yeah, and tears. And tears. <laughs> And uh, we were talking about uh, on the break, and we were talking about you know there, there's no transactions now that are have e- are easy. And so when I'm talking about the future of real estate, uh, and then Chris, you might want to a- jump in here because we have some changes coming up with financing and things like that. Are you finding that each month or year goes by that that you're finding that more difficult to close these transactions? And what do you what do you see in the future for for doing business. I mean, I definitely see that there's a lot more work that we need to do to help our buyers, um, you know, get through the process. Um, I've definitely learned that, um, you know, have your core lender or two that you do a lot of business with and really encourage your buyers to, to, you know, work with them because we can get through, you know, the transaction with the relationships we've built and and the trust. It is about relationships. Uh, bottom line. And Chris, I know you've got some big changes coming up with the C- CFPB, which is the Consumer Finance Protection, Protection Bureau. Bureau. That is you correct. Know, something brought to you by your our government and to protect the consumers out there. And so what, what do you see happening? Well, you know, it, it's interesting. You know, one of the things we've had, unfortunately, we say everybody is the pendulum has swung so far to one side on the lending side. And it's continuing to swing, uh, unfortunately. One of the things that has to, I always like to focus on the positive sides, right? One of the things is the lenders that are still available out there are really the top of the, uh, really the, you know, the cream of the crop. I mean, like everybody. Willibin, Morgan. Yes, exactly, exactly. You know, I'm not into self promotion, but yes, I mean, companies like that's ourselves. What you got me for? Yes, that's what I got you for there. Um, but but one of the things, you know, just in general in the industry is we've we we had a lot of changes that have now brought about that you know it, uh, loan officers are required to be licensed by the National Mortgage Licensing System, required to have ongoing education. Believe it or not, these were not things that took place as little as three years ago. Um, ongoing education. And so then the, what they're continuing to do, though, is is put laws and rules and regulations in place. Now, I'm not, a fav- I'm not a fan of how strict they're getting because some of the interpretations that they're doing, for example, for the qualified mortgage rule that's coming up, uh, is, is going to have some negative effect, right? And, and, and the reason why it's going to have a negative effect is there's two sides. One is what the government intends it to be for. And secondly, is what we have to interpret it for to not be sued, <laughs> yes. so I mean, and, and, or, or not be fined, right? So, so that's one of the biggest things that I'm seeing going forward. That's going to end up being a big differentiator for next year. However, with that being said, and Nicole and obviously Rita and everyone who's here and, and Rick, real estate is still strong though. It's not going to hinder individuals who are looking for homes. If you still have the ability to buy, if you still have the ability to put a down payment down, if you still have credit worthiness, you're going to get into a home. And, and the market is maintaining interest rates at a very low rate right now. So, Nicole, when you're starting to work with somebody, and, and do you have a like a, a, a speech or a talk about this is what the mortgage process looks like? Of course, you're probably working with people who are not first-time home buyers too, so they've been through the process. But it's changed. It's not like it was, like Chris was saying, three years ago. And so going forward – 
What do you tell them? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I actually created a Team Trendy uh, report. My nickname's Trendy Brendy. So once you join my team, um, I have a whole start uh, to finish process on how the home buying uh, process works. So if they know how to read, they can get through <laughs> Well, we know realtors don't, realtors don't read, but we know <laughs> consumers do. But, you know, my core business are the millennials, the Generation Y, um, the people born from uh, 1980 to 2000. There's about 30% of them out there buying houses. And Generation X, there's about 30%. So you're looking at 60% of home buyers. That's where my focus is. And you know what? They're on Facebook. They're on Twitter. Uh, they love my blog, Trendy Dr- Trendy Brendy Report. Just any way to get out in front of them. Um, you know, I have a restaurant report I send out. Just ways to interact other than real estate, but still right. tie into real estate. You're building the trust. It, we you just kind of we do personal relationships. We don't always talk about what we do. We we have we talk about you know what movies we've seen and you know and then things like that. You were at, but I had a question. I no, 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 and, and I agree, I agree. You know, Nicole. You know, one of the things, and it goes very good to what we were talking about earlier is. You know, the one thing that we're seeing is the new the new generation of buyers, obviously. it's it, The one thing is how you market to get in front of them. But then do you still see that you still go back to the old ways, which are, you know, face-to-face, you know, standing up and walking them through that process as being still the tried and true way of moving forward? I mean, we're all human. We touch, feel, see. You know, we've got those senses. Yes. So I absolutely um, do get in front of them, and I'm all about – That's how I met you, going to an event. So just, you know, create an opportunity to have some fun, get together, network, and, yes, get in front of them. Yep. And we had had the group of the NRG group last year for the winners of the 20 under 40, and we had some of the same conversations. And so, uh, you know, the Echo Boomers. That is the uh, the wise. That is a group that is about equal size to the baby boomers. So it's it's real different. But they, they have different needs and wants than, you know, we were the accumulation age. And so we, we were all about acquiring, you know, we wanted big homes and fancy cars and, you know, this. I'm seeing the younger people being a little more practical. Is that what you're seeing? Oh, I absolutely agree with you. I think they have um, less concessions. You know, they don't right. have, I mean, a lot of them are single. So they don't have husband, wife uh, decisions to make. They don't have uh, children decisions to make. They want a, an urban lifestyle. They want to be able to walk to restaurants, um, low maintenance lifestyle, and just, you know, enjoy their community. And, you know, the other thing I've been seeing a lot, you know, in regards to the real estate transaction side of things, which, which you know, years before, I, I'm still a face-to-face guy, but they also want to be able to meet with you on a spurs moment notice when they want to. So you have to also make sure you're very flexible and knowing because a lot of times, as you mentioned, these are individuals that are out there, they're traveling, they're going back and forth, they're in town. It's nothing now to walk into my office any day of the week and all of a sudden have three or four people pop in who were doing loans transactions would say, I just want to drop in and drop this off really fast. You know, whereas before the tradition was, let's go ahead and make an appointment for tomorrow. I'll see you at 3 o'clock. That's, that's really starting to change. And so one of the things that we've gone through and, and really educated our staff on is always be prepared. Always be prepared for somebody to drop in because that new generation is fast. In fact, it's so fast if you don't pick up the phone. They'll change. <laughs> They'll move on. Well, you know, there's a company out there. It's called Uber, and it's a it's a limo service. And they get a call. Then you do it off your off your iPhones and off your Droids, and they have ten seconds to respond to, to that call, or it goes to the next driver. It's an awesome system. But this is what's happening with you know we we're used to the instant information. So you find most most of your clients are going, I want it, and I want it now, and not not when you're ready to do it, when I want it. I mean, you can definitely set expectations. Um, definitely when you say you've got dinner with your family, <laughs> they're, they're cool with that. But I mean, you know, text message, they love texting and I've even right. previewed properties doing FaceTime. They're not even with me right. and I set up a whole FaceTime, uh, walkthrough. So they love their technology. Um, they do love to communicate and you know, they'll, they'll, you'll win them for life. Oh, I would absolutely agree. I would absolutely agree. You know, and, 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 you know, let us know a little bit, obviously, you know, it's great because you were, as you mentioned, sort of bored and bred in the real estate industry. You've you've gone across all aspects of things. Your father, obviously, being a big developer here with uh, Lantejas, you know, and all the changes. You know, let us let us know a little bit. Obviously, you got into it two and a half years ago. Why did you get into the actual realtor portion of things after being in so many different aspects of the real estate business prior to? What what drove you to get into the business? Well, um, I have a communications background, as you know, so I you know have ten years 
getting in front of people on television, communicating, telling stories, sharing stories. And what better way to do that uh, for a longer term than being a real estate agent? I get to deal with people every single day. And it's not just, you know, finding a house or selling a house. You're, you're talking about life in general. Right. You know, you learn all about their families, their hobbies. And I love people. I'm very social. So, you know, I'm involved in a lot of organizations. And to me, this doesn't feel like work. And then <laughs> once we get to the end point, yes, it's nice to get paid. I love the paycheck. But, again, uh, people are smiling, and you've made a difference in someone's life. You know, you, you mentioned something right there. I was telling somebody the other day when, when I was working, it was like a Sunday, and I was doing something, and a friend called, and he's like, Man, you know, have you ever thought about doing something else? I mean, it seems like you're always working. And I tell everybody, it's not work when you love what you do. And so, you know, it's one of those things is, you're, you're right, I think, as much as things have changed, I, I, I love the industry, though. You know, and, and everyone I work with loves the industry. And that's one of the things that we've seen. If anything that's happened five years ago, whenever we had a terrible downturn to today, people who are still in the industry love what they do. And you're dealing with true professionals who have a passion for what they do, who have a desire to be the best for, for their client, and also have knowledge, that we a lot more knowledge and power that we've ever seen before. And inf- this is the information. And you find that your people come to you very informed? Extremely yeah. informed. But one of my clients, I asked them, I'm like, how did you choose me? They said, you were the less, uh, less scary-looking person <laughs> on the Internet. <laughs> so realtors take good pictures, okay? Oh, yeah. That's my tip and, and update them about every two years because they start looking at your car and then looking at you and going – is that is that is that your uh, daughter or son? You know, you, you well, know. anytime you have a name like you know, a nickname like Trendy Brendy, you know you're going to get picked up. You know you're going to have people go to you. And, you know, and and, and I, I've always followed you on on all those different items. And I'll tell you, you, you give some really good information out there, not just about real estate, but just about Houston in general. And that's one of the things we tell everybody: it's great to be able to promote Houston and what we do as a as a society, as friends, as things to do, as places to go, and as people to see. So, yeah, yeah. I wasn't born here, but I ran here quickly. Uh, absolutely. Uh, that's what they say. So we are going to a break, and we will be right back.